Hello everyone. Welcome to NPTEL course on groundwater hydrology and management. This is week 10, lecture one. In the past weeks, we have been looking at the major concepts of groundwater. And then we looked at specific data that we use to understand the concepts of groundwater. And now we are in a stage where we can collect the groundwater data and use it for our understanding. On that note, this week we'll be focusing on more groundwater data availability, websites, and see how we could use it in our assessments. Since this is a introductory course, we'll be showing how to first use this groundwater data and then in, in a downloaded fashion, how you download it and use it. And then we will look at how we can put it into a conceptual model in week 11. So first let's do a recap of week nine and how it is linked to week 10, which is this week. In the week nine, we looked at a very important data for understanding groundwater aquifers and aquifer distances, how it is placed, the boundaries, etc. We looked at boreholes, boreholes and bore log data. And that is the deep aquifer kind of drilling where you drill and then you take a core out. A core is a sample which comes out uh, after drilling and then or while drilling and then you have layers in the core. That layers were used to stratify, create multiple layers of the aquifer so that we know how water moves between the layers. We looked at WRIS data portal, which is the Indian Water Resource Information System. So it's normally called India WRIS. WRIS standing for Water Resource Information System. Sometimes the website does have some lag or it has some issues while pulling up the maps. So don't worry, uh, just revisit it often a couple of days, you will get the data. The link is correct. What link I'm going to show today is going to be correct. But sometimes you may not have data populating because of the hardware, software maintenance, etc. So this, uh, we looked at WRIS downloaded data for stratification. And then there are more data in the portal that we'll be exploring in week 10. We may not be able to get in depth of each and every data that is stored in this website. However, my duty is to introduce these concepts so that you can slowly build an understanding for these by linking it to the weeks before we had this class. So in week 10, we'll be looking at aquifer 2D properties. Okay, so basically uh, a core was giving you a 3D layering, right? You have at one point, how is it layered differently? And then two points you can take for a 3D uh, visualization. But there are some properties which is 2D that we'll be looking at in the aquifer 2D property tab. Then we would slowly look into the most important uh, data that is the groundwater level data. And then we'll also look at some state data. So there are central groundwater board data and then state groundwater board data, which we'll be looking at. So the fund comes from uh, the central government for water management, water resources. That goes to central groundwater board for monitoring groundwater resources. And then we have the state agencies that monitor the state water bodies. Sometimes there is one district with two wells monitoring the same water level, whereas one is for the state uh, and one is the central government water board. So mostly these data should talk to each other, but they are also standalone. I'll go through the examples. Then we'll look at the groundwater resource estimation tab, which talks about how to estimate groundwater resources, the water budgets. We'll look at groundwater resource availability, the current availability, the past availability, and some hydroclimatic data. 
we may spill this into week 11 because it is a very important uh, chapter so uh, if there is a week 11 then we will finish off with uh, a conceptual model uh, which requires all this data and this helps us in mapping this aquifer boundaries understanding why these boundaries are made and once the understanding for the boundaries are made you are able to incorporate it in your water management plans this year is the un water resources uh, water day is given to the groundwater focus and the theme is making the invincible visible so whatever you're learning in this course over this weeks is very important for this year 2022 uh, of which 22nd March is celebrated as the World Water Day and this specific year is devoted to groundwater. So you, I'm very proud that all of you are taking this course because you are learning something that is not fully taught in classes. Okay, so this is how the website looks like. I will pull up the website uh, to show you quickly. Okay. We would be looking at uh, the website, which is India WRIS slash aquifer. And this is the aquifer properties that will come. You will go into this India water resource information system. Depending on your internet connectivity and the connectivity at the uh, WRIS website, there will be some lags. So please adjust and let me now show you the India WRIS website, which I like to Okay, so what you see here is the India WRIS website, we are back on there and we go to water data, go to groundwater data, go right, so I'm not clicking, you just have to move your mouse uh, along this uh, tabs and it will populate, so go to water tab, don't click, and then come down, each one will populate, if you're taking the rural water resource management course, you will be looking at these other tabs, but since we are looking at groundwater in this course, let's go into groundwater and then move right. You'll go into the exploration details of litologs, which we saw in the last week's last class. In this week's class, first class, we will look at aquifer 2D. So I've clicked it. And as I said, uh, depending on your internet speed connectivity, it will take some time, let it populate. Now it has populated. You can move the mouse uh, to the center and then zoom out to show the whole India page. Now you can see it. Okay. Let's start from the right. The right gives you the manual or what each one is. Okay. Use step by step home page module, zoom in, zoom out. As I said, you can zoom in, zoom out using your mouse, uh, the default layers, etc. We'll go through all these uh, in, in class now. Okay, and you can print um, and all these would be updated regularly. What is the base map you want all these things. So I'm going to move this to the side a little bit. See if you move this to the side, then there's more space for the other contents uh, to come in. Okay, so that's what I did. And I'm just moving this so that the India map can be big. And you can also keep this to the side um, if needed. Okay, this is plus is to zoom in zoom out and then you could rearrange them back or, or if you want the table you can click that okay so let's start with the base map if you click the base map you get what is behind the aquifer mapping so what this um, uh, page gives you is the 2d not the depth the xy plane of the groundwater what type of aquifers are there and why are they called, how much area, those kind of things. So for that, it is important to understand the base layer, underneath layer, which shows you the different boundaries, okay? So the base layer can be dark, imagery, etc. If you have slow internet, always use streets 
do not use these other uh, um, layers. For example, I'll show you the imagery. Uh, it is the real time image from satellites. Okay, you can see the green color, brown color, etc. So, but that takes a lot of internet speed. So, for for the best thing, you can use a street map, which is a static map, and you can do that. So, again, click on the base map; it will become small. Okay, and then the print user guide, everything is there. You can create um, a basin wise map or uh, you can you can create this arrow mark and push the legend to the side uh, now you can see the whole of india uh, and or you can do a basin for example administrative is your state boundaries or district boundaries let me focus on maharashtra where iit bombay is okay i'm zooming in so now it is a state boundary sooner you will see the district uh, boundaries if needed i'll have to turn it on okay and then you can select a state if you want to focus on better, for example, let's say uh, Chandigarh and the whole map will shift to Chandigarh and this data is also getting populated. Okay, good. So uh, let's do back uh, for full India. Okay, if you want the full of India, you can just zoom out. And if you zoom out, you could see that as this map, the 2D map is getting populated, you will see other data also change. Still, this is Chandigarh because of this. You can click the X mark, it will go off, and then this will slowly do to India. Okay. Now the legend has come back to India. And if you go to India scale, this legend will stay. Now, yeah. So now what I'm going to do is <coughs> I'm going to show you the layers, which is very important for aquifer 2D mapping. Okay, the first is the basin boundary. We have looked at what is a basin. The basin is the watershed, etc, uh, etc. Et and you know that I've taught you in this class that your groundwater need not follow the basin. So this is like an eye, an eye which if has a cut, which means it's closed. Okay, if you want to activate that layer, just click the eye and the basin is going to get activated. Now you can see the boundaries as basins. Okay. So if I close this, now this becomes back to the district or uh, state boundaries. Okay, and these boundaries can be the basin boundaries can be CWC, which is your Central Water Commission, and different boundaries are there: administrative boundaries, aquifer system boundaries. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click this, turn off the basin. Now you can see the basin is gone. Okay, uh, administrative I'm going to take it off because no point of having watershed. Um, and and uh, administrative on an aquifer, but aquifer system we need. So that is where you can see the different colors of the aquifer and how it is getting populated. On this side, if you see the pie chart is there to show what is the different aquifers present and how much are there. And clearly, as we explained in class, alluvium is high and in the hard rock aquifers is the most. The hard rocks can be further divided into basalt, uh, nice complex, nieces, granite, etc. So all these would be clubbed together as hard rock aquifers, whereas alluvium is around 30% uh, in India. Okay, the percentage is actually given up. You can see that uh, total percentage is around 30%, 29.71. So I was at 30%. The, the hard rock is 60%. Okay, so uh, what you could see here is uh, I'm going down. Uh, and as you can zoom in, okay, I'm going to zoom in to, let's say, um, Mumbai, Maharashtra region, you can see that the blue is the basalt layer, and then the orange is the uh, laterite layers. So along the Western Ghats, you have a particular aquifer, and then on the other side, you have different aquifers. Here, the numbers are for whole India. You can see it is for whole India. Even if you zoom in, it will not change. Only when you change the boundary at the bottom, pick a state, then it changes. Okay, good. So what else can you see? You can see boundaries, you can see the aquifer systems. If I close this, the, the legend goes off the eye if I close it, I need it. So I'm going to take, take it up. Okay, the, then you can see that is one property. So aquifer system, what aquifer it is, is one property, 2D property. The next one is the aquifer depth. Okay, 
So how deep is the aquifer? Um, is it shallow, intermediate, or very deep? This is done for certain states. So you can see that only four or five states are being done. So to see it, you can zoom out of India. And depending on your internet, it takes time. Okay, so since IIT's internet is here, it is coming pretty fast. You can see Kerala is done, Tamil Nadu is done, uh, and other regions are done. Okay, but not Maharashtra, etc. Let me go to Tamil Nadu part. Yeah, Tamil Nadu is here. And I, I'm going to zoom in to Tamil Nadu. You could see that along the coast, it is shallow. Shallow aquifers, unconfined aquifers. But in most of the uh, key districts and along the dry side of the Western Ghats, the rain shadow region of the Western Ghats, it is pretty deep, intermediate to deep. So the units are meters below groundwater level. So ground level. So you have the ground and meters below. So you have to go in the red 150 at least meters down. That is really, really big. Okay. And it's not good for uh, an aquifer system. So understand this that uh, you need to also know the spread of the aquifer on the top 2D, but also how deep is do you have to go for the aquifer. All these are taken from your bore logs, litho logs. I'm going to close this, but you can also see like if you can uh, open it, there's different depths that you have. So for example, if I, I can open this eye and only keep Tamil Nadu, if I want to see Tamil Nadu, I have to close everything else. Okay. And slowly, the internet is also going to show you only this. Good. So I'm going to close this. And then you, the arrow mark you see, you can move up or down. OK? If you close it, then you have more space to put these data. Then come down to the aquifer thickness. So depth is depth to the aquifer. But how thick is the aquifer? Okay, the first water is aquifer depth. But then how thick is it? Uh, it, it could be very shallow, like maybe if you're five meters below the ground. But if it is not thick, then the volume is not there. Remember, volume is a three dimensional. Okay. So I'm going to see what are the different states they have done. And let's focus on Tamil Nadu because we've already looked at Tamil Nadu for one uh, study. So and if you click it, you can see this arrow, a small uh, uh, line moving on the top. That is the <coughs> processing and the internet that is taking time. Okay, good. So now I've done for Tamil Nadu. What you could see is the aquifer thickness is very thin uh, in most parts of Tamil Nadu. That is why there is a lot of groundwater explo uh, exploitation. Since the thickness is low, a lot of pumps are put and water is taken out. If the thickness is good, then some, some wells is enough. One farm can have one well and it could suffice. But since it is not enough, a lot of people are putting more and more wells to take the water out. Okay, so uh, the thickness is given by less than uh, 20 meters below the ground, uh, 20 to 20, 65, 65 to 20, uh, and 120. If it is 120, think about it, it's a big aquifer, okay? And water can be stored thickness. So you're coming down, which is fine. I'm just going to draw it for you. Okay, see if this is your ground level and you're coming down, which is your depth to the aquifer. And then how thick is the aquifer? If it is very thin, then even though you are very shallow, easily accessing the water, you cannot extract more because the water is only this much, okay, thin. But in Tamil Nadu, you could see this is where there is more water, okay? So all this would have a lot of water. And mostly it is because it is alluvial, whereas water is being transported by the streams and then the sediments are deposited as alluvial, okay? Okay, good. So uh, moving on. <coughs> moving on. Uh, now let's look at the differences, why the differences can happen. See, this is not a property that would change because of use. The previous one, aquifer depth, the depth to go to the aquifer can change if you take too much water out. If you take too much water out, then what happens? You have water depletion. And so your thickness is reduced. I'm sorry, the depth uh, reduces, right? Here, the thickness of the aquifer, which can store water is a stationary property. There is some disturbances you can do, compaction, drilling, and all those things. But mostly the, the aquifer thickness is there. It is a natural material. 
if water is there or not is the second question okay so thickness is there so what it shows here is this is very thin the groundwater potential is not much even if you put wells even water comes it won't be enough because it is thin it is a small bank account however these have really good amount of water and that is because it has a very thick aquifer even though you have to go deep you can get more water out because the aquifer is deep and thick so you can justify putting money into accessing this water okay good so i'll close this aquifer thickness also there's one more property we need to look aquifer material okay and there is aquifer material i'm going to click it on and it is it is populating you could see that uh, there is different materials for the aquifer let me see if i could pull this down to okay here it is the legend so the star marks will give you the legend what you see here is the aquifer material which is the not the top material the top is where we saw granite um, the 2d surface you know and here is the <coughs> old name for the geology name for the aquifer how much uh, what material was it formed and that actually disintegrates or weathers down into the aquifer type okay so you have aquifer material and then aquifer type the aquifer material here for example is in this region you have crystalline rocks now the crystalline rocks would weather break down and then become hard rock aquifers so if i turn on the hard, uh, aquifer uh, system see i'm going to turn it on and what is happening here this is basalt so basalt is the aquifer system whereas the type of rock the type of rock present in the aquifer is your aquifer material okay so that is the difference between aquifer systems and aquifer materials it might be slightly confusing to understand that basalt is also a, a, a material right it is a rock however <coughs> the rock came from a geologic setting and that geology setting is the aquifer material so you have an aquifer material it is the parent material it starts to weather it starts to break down and then another material is formed okay so this is called the parent material and then the other material which is the recent material is where water stores let me draw a quick diagram for you for example you have yeah so this is your ground and this is the parent material okay so here for example crystalline rocks the crystalline rocks would be weathering to form a aquifer type and that aquifer type is basalt in this region basalt and laterite we saw for tamil nadu so i hope i am clear this is aquifer material as older older material very very deep very 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 deep like geology and then these are your aquifer types okay so today we have seen <coughs> the aquifer material okay and type of aquifer materials are these okay so you have seen 1 2 3 4 5 only for some states they have given it not for all states so if i zoom out to the whole of india you could see that uh, not all uh, states actually it is, it is trying to get it but it's not there okay the internet also um, uh, has a lot of data yeah okay so uh, with this i think i've covered the aquifer 2d uh, data that is available you could download this data as a chart as i said when you download it for example this data i need okay let me first uh, turn this on so that we can have some data here okay so if things don't switch on sometimes just refresh it it will come up okay now i'm going to push this to the side and i want to show you that this is the data i want to take the principal aquifer systems in india if you want only one state as i told you go to unit wise selection click it select the state you want and then take it let's say i'm going to do tamil nadu 
okay slowly give it time and it has come up okay so tamil nadu um, um, and click this button to go down okay so tamil nadu has been selected you see the pink line and this has been also updated so alluvium is uh, you have a thickness you have other data see for all india these data didn't come why because uh, all india these explorations have not been done only for some states it has been done and this is where you have the physical property specific yield we've covered yield transmissivity we covered fracture uh, encountered so no, some advanced uh, things are there thickness we did aquifer type we did aquifer system we did all these we have done okay so uh, the legend is given so for the coloring let me close this see so you can see the coloring and that that is given the legend here and the uh, shape is given the um, pie chart you can download this pie chart as a pg and csv csv you don't get a chart but you get columns so that you can make different graphs okay or input it into the model that we are going to show in the next class and you can download this it will ask are you any of these just give uh, for example most of you are students you can put student put your name let's say penan my name put your email and then submit it will download okay good so uh, you don't have to have an account but be careful what details you give as in you're a student and other things they want to know how many students are using it right so that's why uh, be appropriate correctly uh, giving your details give, correct give you give your details correctly and if you have any other questions you can go down here to the manual and look at how to download the data what is what is aquifer depth what is aquifer material so i'm not reproducing these into my slides because all the data is given here all the writing is given here you can also download all of this as a manual by clicking here you can click it will open as a pdf like a book you can use the book it's free open source see it is a pdf book okay good i think um, uh, we have covered the aquifer 2d tab uh, the others are user guide print you can also print the page what page you want uh, I, I would recommend you to download it and then print it from your system rather than printing a page like this because then you'll have control of what you want to show not all the details okay so with this uh, i would like to conclude today's lecture uh, where we looked at wris data for aquifer 2d properties uh, especially the uh, xy properties on the surface aquifer type and then also the aquifer depth material uh, how do you zoom into a particular state uh, if you look in here you can also zoom in more uh, as and when you zoom in the names also will come okay the names of the um, the uh, special um, uh, materials or aquifer type whatever you have chosen okay and some background information of your districts, Coimbatore, Naiveli, Vilupuram, um, uh, Muthupet, Karekal, Pondicherry, uh, you know, Chennai, all these names will come through Malai, etc. So how do you want to export it as a layout or as a map? And do you want to export as an image? All these has been given in the export tab or print tab, okay? You can also put an address here to choose a location. For example, uh, you can put uh, IIT uh, if it searches, yes, it does. IIT Powai, okay. So it, it will go to where I'm taking this lecture now, okay. And and it, it zooms in too much, so you have to zoom out a little bit to see where it is. And you can see here it is uh, Mumbai, Maharashtra. Be very careful. Uh, it is a very sensitive. So slowly, slowly move it. See, if you move one, the other things will move. And then now you can see that okay, this is uh, IIT Bombay. Uh, it has this type of rock. So anyone who's going to ask you these details, you can quickly go to this website and give them the details about this aquifer and our properties. With this, I would like to stop today's class. I will meet you in the next class. Thank you.